so dear listeners let us talk about the fourth method of determination of surface tension that is known as maximum bubble pressure method what is being done in this particular method is air pressure is being applied slowly through a capillary tube which is being dipped in the experimental liquid as you can see from the picture one capillary tube is there which is being dipped or immersed into the liquid which is under investigation and a uh, air pressure is being applied you can determine how much is the pressure using manometer when you will be applying air pressure from one end of the capillary tube the other end of which is being dipped into the liquid under investigation you will find that it forms a bubble at the end of the capillary slowly when you go on increasing the pressure this bubble will go on growing and it becomes hemispherical at one air pressure at the value of one air pressure you will find that the air bubble grows in such a way that it breaks away and the point at which this air bubble breaks from the aperture of the capillary that pressure is being noted from the manometer this is known as maximum pressure which is required to make a bubble at the end of the capillary and breaks from the surface at this particular moment of breaking the forces due to maximum pressure which you have applied from the ups, upper side becomes equal to the opposing hydrostatic pressure which is there because of the uh, liquid and the surface tension of that liquid which is acting around the circumference of the capillary through which that bubble was formed now if we want to put these things into equation that the pressure which we were applying from the open end of the capillary and the hydrostatic pressure and surface tension which that liquid was putting onto the bubble which was being formed at the end of the capillary because of the air pressure being applied the, these two becomes equal and we can put it in equation as p pi r square p is the pressure which has been applied by us and pi r square is the area which was available for us for applying that pressure through capillary when it becomes equal to the hydrostatic pressure ph which was working along the cross sectional area of the capillary that is pi r square plus the surface tension of the liquid which was counter balancing this applied pressure along the circumference of the capillary so it becomes 2 pi r gamma if we try to solve this equation we get p is equal to ph plus 2 gamma upon r simplifying it further we get i p is equal to ph was your hydrostatic pressure and it can be determined or calculated the right of which the capillary tube was dipped into the liquid so what was the height h d is the density of the liquid which is under investigation g is the acceleration due to gravity so knowing these values we can determine the value of surface tension 
P we have determined from the values of the manometer. So we know the value of pressure. We can determine the height up to which the capillary was dipped into the liquid. D is the density of the liquid, which can be determined using picnometer or density bottle. We know the value of gravitational force or acceleration due to gravity. And we can determine the radius which was being used. So putting these values into the equation or knowing the values of P, H, D and R, that is the radius, simply we can determine the surface tension. So this was all about the four different methods which can be used for determination of surface and interfacial tension. Out of those four methods, that is capillary rise, then your drop formation, denoiring tensiometer, and maximum bubble pressure method. All these methods are used for determination of surface tension. And only the drop formation method was there, which was being used for determination of interfacial tension as well. So next we'll be talking about spreading coefficient. 